Hello everybody, uh, my name is Gabriella and today I'm going to be showing you how to graph um, functions, in particular in, uh, parabolas, uh, with transformations. Okay, uh, so here I got a function 6x plus 3 squared plus 4. Alright, so it's you know it's really this is really something in disguise this something is going to be the parent function so the way of graphing um, the steps to graph these which I follow are just um, based on preferences you know it's not official it's not how the textbook says it this is how I find it easier and I hope you guys find it as well you know, it's more simpler and more less confusing. Okay, so the first, I'll give you some steps that I do. Um, room. Okay. So hold on. No, actually, I'm good. Okay, the first step I do is identify the parent function. Okay. Um, and in this case, the parent function is you always hiding in a transformed graph or function, whatever. Um, the parent, no, you know what? The parent function, whatever, or parent graph, I don't know. Um, so the parent function in this case is x. We know that squared. You know, you just hunt. For, you have to hunt for it a little bit, but it all automatic. It will eventually automatically um, catch on, and you will s realize the parent functions uh, much faster. Um, so in this case, the parent function is x squared, right? So that's great. We know that. We know x squared, right? X squared is just a symmetrical parabola. Well, it's not really that wide, but, you know, it's just a parabola. Uh, you know, the traditional curve. That's all. That's all it is. And so we did the first step. That's great. The second step will be to um, make a table of values for parent function. Okay? That's all. Um, and we know how to do that too. So we got x, y, our function is x squared, right? So let's start with 0, 1, 2, now I'll go up to 3. Alright, 0 squared, you just have to plug it in to get your y values. 0 squared, that's 0. 1 squared, 1, 2 squared, that's 4, 3 squared, that's 9, alright? So, great, we did that too, we did both of these. Our third step would be to identify No, it's not really identify, it's more actually analyze what will be applied to the x's and the y's. And I'll explain what this really means right now. Alright, so what do I mean by that? I mean, so Okay, you gotta remember something. I'm just gonna copy this. The thing I got up there, the R function. Uh, plus 4, right? Let's check. Yeah. Oops. Alright. So you gotta remember that whatever is outside the brackets, so the 6 and the 4, this will be applied both to the Y's. What the heck do I mean by that? I know. Okay, the 6. When you've got a number 
the a value here, you are going to multiply your original y values by this 6 to make the graph either longer or steeper or wider or stretched, not stretched, uh, compressed, okay? And since 6 is bigger than, um, is a, you know, it's not a fraction, it's going to make the graph very, you know, very skinny-like, something like that. It's a pretty high number for a parabola. So, the, regardless of that, you know, just keep in mind that this is going to be applied to your y values. The 6, you're going to multiply uh, to your, you're going to multiply your y values, y values, by 6, by your 6. And the 4 also is going to apply to your y values. You are moving your graph, basically, if you've got a parabola, you are moving it up 4 units. Okay, so it's going to look something like that now. Just moving the whole y, everything, the y values up four units. That's all. Okay? That's all that really means. Um, yeah. So now that we covered that, I just want you to understand what each number is doing, what its goal is, you know? Um, now let's look at the x minus at uh, plus three. Now when looking at this you gotta remember what's inside the bracket, the operation is always the opposite. So if it says x plus three, you're not adding three, you're actually subtracting three. Okay? It's a little bit hard to catch on and you know, remember, but it'll eventually the more you practice the more it will seem natural. Uh so yeah, it really you are moving your graph because this plus 3 or minus 3 plus 7 plus 20 identifies your movement to the left or to the right. Okay? So if it says plus 3, you automatically think, oh, well, plus to the right. No, you have to think opposite. Minus 3. So to the left. Oops, you've got a graph. You are moving it 3 units to the left. So now it looks something like that. Okay? That's what you are doing. So just remember that this is applying to your x values. This, you are subtracting 3, the opposite, x subtracting 3 from your x values. Okay? You're multiplying by 6 to your y values. You're adding 4 to your y values because everything outside the bracket is applied to your y values. And inside the brackets is it applied to your x values, which here is just subtracting 3. And now what we have to do is really, don't mind the brackets, I'll explain, really do the arithmetic. So what did we say we are doing to our x's? Well, we said we are subtracting 3, and that's what we are going to do. Subtract 3 from all our original parent function values, x values. And to our y, what are we doing? Well, we are going to be multiplying by 6 to make it all stretched and up, right? And we are going to add 4. Here it's not any opposite tricks, it's just because it's outside the bracket, it's the way it is. You are adding 4. And now let's do the arithmetic. You're going to have new values. The transform. This is your parent function values, your regular parabola. To get your transformed, this one, you have to apply this arithmetic. Okay. Well, let's do it. Zero minus three, minus three. One minus three, minus two. Two minus three, minus one. Three minus three, zero. Okay. 0 times 6, 0 plus 4, 4. 1 times 6 is 6, plus 4 is 10. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 4 is 28. 9 times 6 is 54, plus 4 is 58. So these now are your new x and y's. 
okay? You will just have to disregard these. No, forget about them. These are your new x, y. And all you've got to do now is plot. Points, well, new points, okay? So let's see. No, it's too small. Alright. Let's see. Tick marks up here. I know it's a lot of tick marks, but. I will need them. Okay. So, our first point is negative 3, 4, as you can see. So, negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, negative 2, 10. Negative 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright. Negative 1, 28. Okay, now we have to improvise a little bit and exaggerate. Negative 1, let's say 28 is here. Okay. <laughs> and last one, 0, 58. So 0, alright, that's 58, right guys? Yes, it is. So our graph, oh, our graph really looks, it's going to, oh, Jesus, it's going to look something like that. And if you look, this is our half, this is half the parabola. But you might be thinking, well, where do I turn? Well, that's the point. How do you know? Wow. You can look at your original graph. This is in vertex form. How do you find your vertex when it's in vertex form? Well, it's right in front of us. So our vertex is this value, negative 3, because it's the opposite, negative 3 and 4. Is that value negative 3 and 4? Let's see. Negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, it is. This is our vertex. So it it cannot go lower than this. So you know it's going to turn back around. Alright. You know what? I'll do one value with you to check. So we started with 0, right? 0, 0. Let's do negative 1. If I do a negative 1, negative 1 squared, what's 1? And now let's apply our transformations to our x, negative 1 minus 3, it's negative 4, to the 1, 1 times 6 is 6, plus 4 is 10. So negative 4, 10. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10 is right there. Look at that. It's going to be like this. It's going to look something. You can check. You don't have to do it as I do it, but... It's really going to look like that. Tall, skinny, weird looking problem. <laughs> now, um, I mean, they're fun. They're good times. Just, they could get confusing. Um, but it's really, you're dealing with the parent function all dressed up. You know, just says, oh, well, so we got this, right? No. We got it, this. He says, well, I'm feeling bored today. Let me just pack on a three. Let's go right here. Um, and multiply myself by six and add some four. And now I have to. We have to graph them. We're the ones who have to do the work. Uh, this should be a two. Um, and yeah, you just have to basically, you know, find this x squared again. Graph it to see it's really the x squared moved around a little bit dressed up in some fancy fancy clothing <laughs> anyway I don't know what I'm saying thank you guys for watching I will have probably another video up for about uh, regarding this topic um, maybe a little harder one a little bit different we'll see but I will have another one soon
thank you very much. I hope it be, I'd be very gra great gratified. I apologize, gratified for your subscriptions and your likes, comments. If you have any questions, send me a message. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks.